Join me every Thursday on YouTube for another live show of Let's Talk Photography. We cover the latest news, interviews with today's industry leaders, tips, tricks, lighting, cameras, and the business of photography. My weekly live stream is all about crowd participation. You're encouraged to ask questions, talk about the cool camera gear you've got or the camera gear you want to get. Hell, you can just join our open panel discussion during our Q&A portion of the show. The cost of access to Let's Talk Photography is very, very low. For today only, I'm hosting a very low price of free 99 to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming live streams. Now let's get back to the show. All right, welcome everyone. Boy, oh boy, do I have a topic for you today. Okay, as you can tell by the title of this video or live stream, rather, we're going to be talking about tips and tricks to keep yourself safe as a photographer, because I have a heck of a story to share with all of you. Trust and believe it. And it's not a good one. All right. So before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, shame on you. Go ahead and follow me on social media everywhere else except obviously here. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. I'm on Facebook, Robert Silver Photography. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Threads. That's right. That new cool place where all the kids stay. And I'm on TikTok. And I'm on Twitter. Hello. So go ahead and follow me everywhere else. You could always reach out to me. I'm very active on um, Facebook, Instagram. Well, I'm active on all of them. And actually, I need to add LinkedIn because I'm actually pretty active there. There's like three creative groups I'm a part of on LinkedIn that I post regularly. So I need to add LinkedIn. That's what I'm going to do. I'll add LinkedIn later on. Um, if you haven't already seen, if you're new to this channel, make sure you go ahead and check out my latest video where I give you a full recap of my uh, visit to the Sony Alpha community event that happened in San Francisco last week. It was a very, very cool event. I had so much fun there. And I was able to test out really quick, not really in depth, but I gave you my first impression of the Sony A67 Hundo, baby. <laughs> and this photograph here that you see was taken with that camera with eye detect and boy it nailed it this is the jpeg right out of camera i didn't edit it at all so i was really impressed with it and there you go all right um looks like we got something oh hey what's up malcolm good to see you all right thank you very much for tuning in i'm sorry i missed your show this monday i um uh, you'll hear the story that i have to share so it all makes sense Lately, I have been a little overwhelmed and stressed, and that's kind of why I brought up this topic, really. All right. So make sure uh, if you're here, e easiest way to support the channel is by pressing that like, that share, subscribe, and yes, smash that bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming videos and live streams. All right. And um, I think that also helps too uh, to get not notifications, but at least show the content I post on a community tab to pop up in your feed too. So just go ahead and do all that. And uh, it's a very low price of free 99. So go ahead and support that. Derek, for once, is not co-hosting with me today. And uh, because he he's in the hospital uh, taking care of his father and he's got more pressing things to do than to jump on here and argue with me about photography news. But we got something juicy for all of you next week. Next week, we're going to be talking all about video, okay? Videography, video, anything video related, cameras, lenses, et cetera, et cetera. Derek, get more into video. Um, just this past weekend, I shot for uh, two days for my next upcoming short film. So we got a lot to share with you in terms of that experience. 
And um, so next week will be all about video for with your with your cameras and so forth and so on. So if you have any questions about video, how to produce high quality content, whether it be for vlogging, for streaming, or if you want to start testing the waters um, with your filmmaking ability, then definitely next week is going to be the live stream you want to tune in for, of course, every Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Whoops. Nope. nope. There we go. All right. So uh looks like we got a couple of, hold on. What do we got here? Oh, hey, thanks. Thanks for understanding, Malcolm. Appreciate that. Uh, I, hey, Malcolm, I saw you talk about the uh, A6700. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll watch your, I'm going to watch your um, video when I get off, actually. While I'm making dinner, I'll watch some of your video there. And um, hopefully you checked out. I think you did. Um, my first impression, but obviously not being a Sony shooter, you know, I'm not gonna lie. The the like I mentioned last week, the the menu system. I was like on on Mars, and I thought I was still on Earth. And that's just because I'm so used to shooting Nikon and Lumix. I can just get around, it. and I think that was just a learning curve. But overall, uh, the performance was phenomenal. Though. I was really impressed with that little package and what it could do. So, shout out to the A6700 right there. Uh, we got Manila Martin in the house from the Philippines. Yes. Shout out to my Filipinos out there. I have a lot of Filipino friends. My daughter's mother is Filipina. She's like American Filipino, though. She ain't from the Philippines like that. And um, so shout out to everybody, to my brown Asians out there. Shout out to all y'all. All right. So um, with that said, let's let's get right to the topics at hand. All right, let's talk about some of this photography news. I saw something um, in the photography sphere and things are changing fast, everyone. I know, I mean, we have this new threads thing going on. Uh, I heard Twitter's gonna update their algorithm to not prioritize, but to make it better for photographers. Okay, I was reading that earlier today. And, um, also, our camera systems, you see with the A6700, they have a chip dedicated for AI built into it. I mean, if you're not if you're not looking at not just cameras and lenses, but the technology, techno holy cow, that was a big um, technological advancements that are happening. I'm telling you, you will be left behind. And this first story of today's photo news will prove that point. So, with all that said, let's get to it, y'all. All right, check this out, okay? Check this out. Now, this trend here, this petapixel, right? Why pay a photographer? Generation Z go wild for AI-generated headshots. And you can see this little influencer uh, person here, um, using this trend uh, to get a new LinkedIn headshot. I'm telling you, this is not good news. This is not good news for any of us. Okay. Uh, mean, well, since I'm a portrait fashion photographer, definitely. I don't like the sound of this generation Z. Are you using artificial, uh, are using artificial intelligence photo at Remini? Now they got an app. Remember, I reported a couple months ago about a website doing this. Now they have a mobile app right on their phone. Boom, bypass you, forget you. To transform their selfies into professional headshots and are questioning why they would ever pay for a photographer. <laughs> the generative AI photo enhancer Remini has gone viral on TikTok with thousands of users using the technology. Yo, this is very scary. I have amassed over 42.2 million views in the last five days. Dang. That girl's video went super viral. Showed how she used Remy to turn a selfie in her car. A selfie she took in her car into a series of professional headshots for her LinkedIn profile. Since then, the AI photo app has shot up popularity. The app has even dethroned Meta's threads. Oh my God. 
and soared to number one spot in the U.S. in Apple Store charts. Oh, so far, oh, that hashtag has 1.4 billion views on TikTok. It launched in 2019 software to enhance photo clarity. And now it has generative AI to its app. 2022 is free to download and requires a sub subscription to gain access to all its features. Yo, guys, this is nuts, man. I'm telling you. Um, oh, there it is. Remini app right there. Look at that. Generate your photos. Pick 8 to 12 photos of yourself. And it does that. Oh, my Lord. Ah. Yowzers. Um, that is crazy, man. That is that is absolutely nuts. So I'm 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 telling you, folks, if you're not if you're not paying attention right now, it's gonna be cookies. This this is gonna be your hobby real quick. Okay. This will this will make a lot of photographers become hobbyists overnight. Stuff like this. I can't, I wish I could curse. Okay, but this is no bueno. All right. Um, hold on. Let's check this out. Oh, we got a comment here from John Ishii's in the house. I'm looking for a vintage Sony used in the Vietnam War. Ooh, that'd be super nice. Um, if it's film, unfortunately, it's just end up on my shelf here, but it would be treasured. That's pretty awesome. That's dope. Let me know how that goes. Um, Malcolm, I need to try the menus on other systems because the menus are so much better now, but they still get negative marks. Well, if if the menus are better now, right? If the menus are better now, Malcolm, I can't imagine what they were three, five years ago. Yowzers. Okay, so. But here's the thing. Let me be fair here. Okay. If I had a week or two to really sit down with the A6700 or any of uh, Sony's late cameras, I bet I can learn the system, get used to it, etc., cetera, and um, probably won't feel as frustrated. So I do want to put that out there. I want to be honest. I only had literally, you know, 15 minutes with it. So um, I don't want to act like it's absolute trash. I'm sure it has improved. So I just want to be fair in acknowledging that. Uh, if uh, John Ishii says, if you're ugly, why not use AI? Ooh, good point. Yeah, good point. Um, it's a joke. Never happened. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. You know, that AI, AI is not um, it's for sure no joke, as we all know. But you see that app? That's just... Somebody else's company is going to come out with an app like that, too. There'll be other competitors, just like there's other video editing apps. You have CapCut. You have InShot and stuff like that. There's going to be competitors jumping out. When they saw when they saw this attention, they, they, they see it's, it's, there's a market for it. 42.2 million views on that one video? Oh, that's ridiculous. So with that said, and this is the future generation of potential clientele. These are the young people that, well, they don't get married as early as they used to, but if they ever do get married, they may, you know, need a photographer. But with all these AI, AI situations, it's going to, it's going to carve out larger portions of what you could get from that client. And what I mean by that is like, if you get a wedding client, you might be able to get their baby photos, family portraits as well. You know, there's a, there's a, um, how can I say? Um, um, oh, oh, when the money keeps coming in, oh my god! Either way, there's more than one way to work with that client. It happened for me. I'm currently booking for a maternity shoot and then family portraits after the baby, but I shot their wedding. So what I'm saying is they're they're already being trained as teens, early twenties to bypass a photographer, to see the uh, the value of a photographer even less or their price too expensive, and they're already being programmed or taught or whatever to, to um, go to an app, go to an app and get it done. 
We saw that a, uh, what was it? I think it was a website where if you upload engagement photos, they'll spit out a bunch of wedding photos for you. Same kind of thing, but this is for headshots. That was for literally um, you upload engagement photos or family photos of you and your person, and it spit out tons of different variations of wedding photos depending on the information you fed the app. So I'm just saying, like, we have to be conscious. We have to be aware that this kind of te disruptive technology is in play. We see what's we see what's going on with the the um, Hollywood writers and the SAG AFTRA folks. They're being disrupted. They see what's going on a mile ahead. So as 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 photographers, we need to figure out ways to capitalize or at least prepare better prepare ourselves for what's going to happen. Because I guarantee you in three years, five at the max, it will be a totally different ball game. Marketing strategy, how you brand yourself. There's going to be a lot more hobbyists, and it's going to be harder for folks to make money off of it. It will be a lot fewer uh, folks that uh, can make a solid living. If they already, already haven't made a huge name for themselves by now, that's why the Lindsay Adlers, the Peter Hurleys, the, uh, and so forth have um, – are still here and still top tier because they have the name recognition. They've been around forever. Uh, their work is excellent, et cetera, et cetera. But you could even see some of their work, especially Lindsay Adler, incorporating AI. So anyway, I, 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 I thought it was a profound um, shot across the bow, if you will, a warning shot for us photographers that like, look, these folks are huge segment of a population that spends money. And if they're, instead of paying you your $300 or whatever it is you charge for headshots and they can get it from an app and pay some nominal fee, they're going to, they're already going to do it. That's why the, the, uh, the downloads went bonkers, right? Uh, let's say if you had a client since they were in their mid twenties and then maybe their 30s and 40s and you know you shot their families and everything else eventually they're going to time out those customers are going to that generation is going to time out you can't you can't keep milking that cow you're going to have to uh, adapt your marketing and your brand to a to a new uh uh generation and this generation is being taught to bypass you so i'm just saying let's just be prepared that's all i'm not trying to I'm not saying get your tinfoil hats, but I'm saying let's be let's be prepared here. All right, uh, Moz Man's in the house. He says uh, maybe a Minota SRT pre Sony. That was for John, I'm sure. Um, we got Malcolm. The A mount started in a uh, 85 to 86 on Minota, I believe. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, hold on. Okay. 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 Oh. Here we go. Drunk wedding photographer. Thanks to AI, looks like using film for weddings will finally pay off. Face, fuchsia, tongue out. <laughs> you, you, you know what? Actually, that's a good point. Um, you brought an interesting point there. So if you do do film for weddings, right, some people will want that retro um, experience through it, through, the, through their photos. So that is a niche. I mean, that's one way to get around this is to specialize in a niche. But I'm telling you, specialization is going to help you out in the long run. You can't be a jack of all trades. you got to specialize in something and become damn good at that. That's going to help you out if you're trying to make some extra money through this. If not, well, Mazel Tov, go ahead and do what you do, okay? Um... Luke's in the house. Thank you, Luke. Hey, Robert, and everybody else. Oh, uh, Maz. Oh, it weeds out the tire kickers and cheapskates. Yeah, you're right about that. You're absolutely right. Um, you're absolutely right. But unfortunately, by the time, let's say, they get those that young generation in their early 20s, and by the time they get to, let's say, 30 and they want to get married, they've already been taught for a decade to devalue a professional photographer, right? So when you slide across that table, hey, here's my rate sheet. And like, oh, my God, I've been doing photos with my iPhone. 
I've been I've been uh, uploading the best of the best and getting all these likes with just some stupid selfie with horrible light. And then I've been getting all my headshots for LinkedIn and getting these jobs from a stupid app. See, they, they devalue what they're, they're being taught to devalue this craft slowly but surely. Look what they're doing to writers. Once they figure out chat GPT is going to replace a lot of writers. That's why they're out there picketing. I don't blame them. We don't have a union like that, and no one will give a damn about us anyway. <laughs> but I'm trying to sound the noise. I'm just saying, uh, you know. But, yeah, it will kick out the, the tire kickers and cheapskates. But when it comes to weddings, you can't really get around that unless you just want Uncle Johnny to shoot it for you, you know. But then when they see the price, since they haven't been trained or, or, or been told that, like, this is an actual craft, um, by the time they get to that point in their life, they're going to be, they're going to have a heart attack trying to gobble that price up. Um, he says hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, it will. It will. But I, I'm just saying, I'm thinking long-term, uh, very good point. Film will be stronger. Film is super strong. I was just at Mike's camera, everybody. And the popularity of film is, I'm t it's crazy. It's crazy how much Mike's camera makes processing, developing, selling film, everything film. They sell use of film cameras. There's a huge market. And that Z, that Generation Z, they eat it up, okay? Shout out to Fuji Instax and all that other stuff. They eat it up. So Fuji, uh, Fuji, film is not dead, that's for sure. I'm just never going to touch it. So that's that, okay? Um, Maz, man. People will tire of AI and photographers will become great again. Well, you know, um, I certainly hope so, okay? But I'm going to plan for the worst, okay? I'm not lowering my prices. That's what I won't be doing. But I do have to think more strategic. This year, more than ever, I've had to think way more strategic in my photography business very much so i've never thought more long long term in the forecast of of, of my uh not only income my marketing etc than i in this year than any other year of my photography so uh john ishii oppenheimer is using imax film made by kodak so it's not going anywhere you know no you're absolutely right 100% and I have a I have a news about uh, not Oppenheimer, but about the new Impossible uh, Mission Impossible. By the way, a little fun fact: um, Maz Man comes back. The good thing is the younger generation is very active in content and capturing it themselves. Exactly, so they have some appreciation for the craft and skills. They do, and they don't. And I'm gonna say this, Maz Man. When 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 I'm in a store, I hear them. I hear them. They come to the store. They 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 don't know why they have to pay the two to three to four thousand dollars, except a few of them, from what they can get out of this. Right? Oh, this is what I've been doing. This looks great. I'm getting all my likes, my comments. I'm getting people messaging me saying how great I am and and you know beautiful, whatever, you know. Pipe dreams are sold to them all because of this, all because of this. This is why point and shoot sales dropped like a rock. So the, this younger generation may be more active in making content and capturing it themselves. Yes, but not all of them are buying a seven fives, you know, Z eights and stuff like that. That's us. That's those older folks with some money understand and blah, blah, blah. No. There, this is it right here. That's why their headshots on that Remini app is done right here. And that that those selfies she took was with her phone. It wasn't with a real camera or like a, you know, mirrorless camera, excuse me. Um yeah, look at that. Oh, uh, no, you're you're not lying, John. Uh Hollywood writers are gone with chat GPT. Um, I want to be honest, everyone. I uh, when I was at the Sony event, I downloaded Chat GPT app because a, a photographer buddy was like, "Dude, you got to check this thing out. The free version is amazing. Check it out." 
So I I I took I downloaded the app and I just try I just threw in some information. Da, 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 and that thing was, I'm not gonna lie, the free version, which I believe is version one, is absolutely, absolutely unequivocally mind blowing. That's right. It was absolutely mind blowing. It was crazy, man. That chat GPT, and I heard now it's like on version four, must be even faster, smarter. I, I, it's. I'm telling you, if I, if I could plug in the right info, what's what I think the studios are gonna do is they're gonna see how they could do more with less, right? Kind of like the Marine Corps, <laughs> do more with less. So you're gonna. Um, I think that's what's gonna happen. Instead of having a room full of writers, let's say six, they'll have two, two that type in exactly what they want, the direction, the character, do do do. And then they're gonna, and then that chat GPT is gonna spit out suggestions and then they nitpick the best parts. So, Hollywood, if you're listening to me, feel free to close your ears. We need, we need, folks need jobs around here. <laughs> but that's what I think. That's what I think. I mean, quite honestly, but that's just me. Um, oh, Moz Man comes back. Our writers, us, to supplement content, but it's not ready to replace writers. Also, there are so many lawsuits right now that ChatGPT has actually gone backwards. Lots of content had to be removed. It's a hiccup. It's a hiccup. Oh, I'm sure. It's but it's part. It's but Maz, man, I I think it's a lot of part of its growing pains. Since this is all new and disruptive, they have to figure out how to how to make this work. And um. What was it? You know, when MP3s came out and it totally disrupted. We saw this before with the music industry with MP3s and 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 and, and um, download, you know, iTunes, which really disrupted things. And later on streaming, you know, which could still have an argument about streaming for music. But the point is they there were a lot of growing pains to figure out how to how to make this work, contracts, how to get compensated, who could use the content licensing, et cetera. Right now, this is all growing pains for chat GPT and et cetera. There are other companies right behind chat GPT and whoever else that I'm quite sure is going to pop up specifically from China. Probably, um, th this, this is just, this is just the, uh, the calm before the storm, calm before the storm, anything that can be replaced by a computer eventually may just well be. Ask anybody who works in um, automotive uh, in terms of like uh, Ford dealerships and stuff. A lot of that stuff is mechanically automated. It's not replaced by somebody in Mexico City. It's mostly automated. So all I'm saying is, look, go to McDonald's. They got one teller in there now in McDonald's, but four machines. If it can be replaced, it will be replaced. I went to Safeway, okay? They got six registers for self-service. One person just needs to monitor it. I mean, let's just be honest. The writing is on the wall, though. And the fighting chance about these writers is because they have a union. But we've spent three decades decimating unions. Okay? And because of that, you know, <laughs> a lot of folks don't have a shot. They don't have a chance in hell. If they're not part of a union. Anywho, that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to talk about photographers. So go ahead and support uh, Professional Photographers of America, PPA. They are a, um, uh, a side of great, a company for great or, uh, information for photography. They give out, uh, uh, um, um, uh, what was it? Uh, tons of contracts and they help you with all that stuff. Insurance. And they insure your gear with your monthly membership. So I'll talk about that in a minute, though. Um, hey, oh, Cooley. Hey, Cooley, what the heck? <laughs> Welcome, Cooley. Wow. Awesome. Great to see you. Good. Great to see you. Uh, we got Roy in the house also. I think he, I think you changed your photo, Roy. I think you, maybe you did. I, I don't remember that uh, that photo there. Um, what do you say? 
going to see Oppenheimer this morning in IMAX getting pumped up about it. Hey, let me know how that works out. I still, you know what? I still love going to the movies. I really do. Um, I love the popcorn. It's overpriced. I don't care. It's overpriced. It's, it is what it is. Um, the, you know, get a small drink. I don't know. It's just something about the experience of going into the theater, the smell that the whole, I just love going to the movie theaters. Uh, so shout out, John. Um, let me know how that works. I'm actually a little bit excited about this mission and pop possible for this particular reason. I'm going to share with you very soon. Um, Roy comes back. Millennials have no patience to learn new skills. I, their attention span is very, is nil to none. You know what I mean? Uh, they're off to the next thing. If it's not entertaining, splashy and stuff like that, it is very hard to keep their attention. Thus, the popularity of vertical videos, 15-second videos, TikTok, etc. So that is something you have to just unfortunately recognize if we're trying to market ourselves in this new uh, arena uh, or ever-changing arena um, because the reality is we can't just go after the same demographic of customers forever. Eventually, they're going to grow to a point where you've gotten as much as you could out of them. You have to now sell to their grandkids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, otherwise, this is, again, if it's a hobby, you know, have fun. Um, cool, because I need to create your own unique market. Absolutely. And that, and that's what I mentioned earlier, Cooley, is that like you got to really be a specialist on top of a specialist and then triple down on it, not double down, triple down on whatever it is that is for you and become damn good at it. At the Sony Alpha event, if you saw my video, I bumped into uh, Philip Lumen. L oh, sugar, I love his tea. Um, let me get up his name. But he's he was awesome. Um, Philip Lamone. Right, he's a food photog food video content creator. He does photos and videos of food, and the, I mean his content is amazing. It's really dope. Like I follow him on Instagram, and I'm like, man, this stuff is great. Right, now, as a matter of fact, let me pull it up right now for you guys. Okay, so you can, um, I want you to see. This is a good example about creating your own unique market. There we go. All right. Check this out, everybody. So he was really cool. He's in my video. I interviewed him for like a, a minute and a half or two minutes or something. Check it out um, at the Sony Alpha community event. Now, he look at, look at his page here. What does it say? You don't even have to read his profile. You know what he's about. Food. <laughs> food and gear and gear that helps him take more content of food. Okay. And it's good. His content is good. Okay. Look at that. He's making vertical videos with an actual camera, not a, uh, iPhone. Okay. And look how good it comes. It's great. It's good stuff. Now, am I a food photographer? No, but I can respect the quality of his content and the food does look good. And I'm a vegetarian. That's what's up. And he was super nice. Like, I just randomly interviewed him, and he just snapped to it because he's a content creator, so he knew he knew what to do uh, when I started asking him questions, and um, it was great. So, but the point is, he's to Cooley's point, he created a unique market. He he's he's a specialist in this. If you want to talk about food content or whatever, or even hire him, you know this is the man. This is all he does. He's not out there trying to be a million things and landscape and, oh, by the way, I traveled here and, and I looked at that. No, it's it's all about food content and the gear that helps him create this kind of content. Okay? And that's what I mean. You got to triple down. Triple down. There should be no question about what it is that you do. Okay? When it comes to uh, uh, branding yourself in the marketplace. Uh, he said millennials are old at this point. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's why I'm talking about the gener uh, what do you call it, Gen Z folks. That's the next level. But the, uh, millennials, you have there are some younger millennials that maybe hit their uh, first wedding or something like that, or maybe whatever family portraits. 
Uh, but yes, the Gen Z, but the Gen Z is learning how to get headshots from that stupid app. Okay. Uh, so yes, you're absolutely right. Boz, man. Um, here we are. Most Hollywood filmmaking has left California to find cheaper places to film. Exactly. So if they're, if they're, cause I know a lot of them are doing Arizona, um, Texas, obviously is always a cheaper place. Uh, but Arizona specifically, Atlanta for sure, because a lot of the big Hollywood or uh, Hollywood um, productions, uh, they end up renting Tyler Perry's studio because it's cheaper, bigger, and just as well equipped. Okay, remember Tyler Perry created the largest Hollywood studio outside of Hollywood. Okay, so and it's cheaper to do there. So th I, and so if they could shave a buck or two, they're gonna. They're going to do it. So that all I'm saying is, what do you think is going to happen to photographers? I use the paid, uh, I use the paid version GPT-4. All right, John, how is that, man? You got to, you got to tell me how that is. I saw it. It's like 20 bucks a month. I don't do, I don't do writing like that. So no, but I do use Grammarly because I'm always, I type too fast. So Grammarly really helps me out so I don't sound too much of an idiot with my misspelling. Uh, Mozman. Oh, good to see you, John. There you go. That was for John. Shout out to John. There you go. Uh, Roy says, this AI had to come. Programmers were getting computers to write music and poems 50 years ago. I mean, this is just a natural order of things. I mean, MP3 destroyed CDs. Okay. And then streaming destroyed all of it. <laughs> now you just stream. I don't have one downloaded piece of song on this, but for damn sure on my Spotify, I have a, I have tons of playlists. I got all sorts of playlists on my Spotify. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Okay. And it's way more convenient. So absolutely. That's, that's all I'm, I'm just trying to help folks like face reality. Uh, I'm on chat GPT three and it has been a huge help in editing my blog content, the primary way I drive traffic to my website. Well, there you go, folks. Okay. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Look, we have our fellow community right now telling us what time it is. So the rest of you who want to keep your heads in the sand, you'll be left behind. All right. Uh, John uh, John comes back. Apple is coming out with their own AI project, Ajax. Oh, my God. That means Meta is right behind them. Wait, I think Meta already talked about AI. <sighs> it's a crazy world, man. <laughs> Roy says, I trust computers more than most people. Hey, oh, well, I don't know what to tell you about that, but I, I can't really can't really blame you. Matter of fact, I trust most kids. Most kids than I do adults, okay? Kids are more positive. Um, Andrew Yang was right back. Yeah, actually, you're right. I saw an interview with him just recently. Um, and I was like, damn, this dude's starting to make a little bit more sense. <laughs> you know, uh, he said, we all be gig workers. AI will replace us. Oh, my God. And in a sense, we are. I mean, a lot of people get paid through apps and doing gig work, if you will. It's, it's crazy. And even more so we're trained into it. Cause after the, um, we're trained into the flexibility of gig work life because of the, uh, lockdown, we are already accustomed to working from home, being comfortable with that, the flexibility, et cetera. Anyway, folks, that's what I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Americans are going to need UBI, universal basic income. Um, I was just talking to my brother today, and that's part of the discussion today about f security as a photographer. It's like, what does the future hold for us seriously in terms of income security? And, um, but again, if this is just a hobby for you, then great. But I, I think in the long run, there'll be less people able to make a living as a photographer. I think that's literally the reality. It really is. I'm starting to see the writing on the wall. My marketing has, has changed. 
Uh, AI will change things. I'm just not afraid of it. And I believe society will revolt against it if it becomes too disruptive. Just call it woke AI and it doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, that, you know, uh, Moz, man, that, that was hilarious. Yeah, we need to call it this woke AI. Yeah. The, and, and for the other side, we'll call it um, Trump AI. And then uh, no one will ever use this stuff. But unfortunately, that will not be the case because tech companies don't give a damn what side you're on and how you think. OK, they just want to manipulate and monetize and and and, and profit off of your um, ideology. So they'll market whichever way they got them. Uh, Roy, that photo is one of the first digital I ever took A friendly Kokobora. I like Kokoboras. Oh, OK. Yeah. I've never seen that. Um, I'm going to say bird, <laughs> but that just goes to show how much I know about animal photography. I, that, that looks like a bird over there. Yeah, I'll call it that. Okay. Uh, Cooley says bright, shiny objects. Yes, you're right. But unfortunately, they're learning how to use these bright, shiny objects that's going to disrupt us. At least the writers in Hollywood and SAG Astra have numbers, they have a collective bargaining or union, really. Where in which they could bargain and argue and make noise. And and obviously uh, you have highly A-list actors to D-list and whoever all coming together saying, screw this. We do not. We're individuals. We only have maybe a group of us on a stream, like right now, that gets it or don't get it. And, um, and hell, we don't really have any political power like they do. So that's why we got to share this with the, with each other. I know I'm always throwing dirt at Instagram, but I have been fortunate to have carved out a small but loyal niche market who appreciate who I am and what I do. And that's and that's super important, more than ever, <laughs> more than ever, because I don't know how these algorithms um, these algorithms are changing all too 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 much for me to keep up. I don't get how things are working. So. Um, John comes uh, comes back. I like that Robert, a real camera, not an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, but that slipped for all my iPhoneographers out there. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, sorry, not sorry. Okay. But um, now, do I use this for you know photos in a pinch and stuff like that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, creating content for for you for you folks. Yeah, absolutely. It's not bad. And if you don't know. If you want to start a, your own channel or create content, this iPhone shoots, you know, 4K, 30 frames a second, Apple Pro Res Raw. I mean, it'll get you started. But there's a magnanimous, there's like a magnanimous, there's a huge difference in that, what it can do compared to $500 camera. Like a $500 camera will outperform this bad boy. For sure. And a 50 millimeter F1.8 lens, it's a wrap. iPhone can't keep up. Um, Roy says, uh, food is hard to get into. And the worst part is that it usually comes with an art director. You're absolutely right. But this gentleman here who I bumped into, um, Philip, he seemed to do something right. I don't know what he did. But either way, he seems to be the man at it. Uh, my, my most important, uh, point I was trying to make was, you know, get in a niche, triple down on it and become an expert in that niche d despite the obstacles like sooner than later. Okay. Sooner than later. John says, Jack, uh, GPT four is insane. <laughs> it's so fast and accurate. Oh my God. That's scary, man. Cause I'm telling you, I have this, the free version, the one. And I'm like, dude, my mind just literally blew up. Okay. I was, I was blown away. I, I had, I, <laughs> I live in a family house. It's, it's me and my family. I have my own place, but it's a duplex. And I ran upstairs to my family. I was like, have you heard of this chat GP? And I showed him, I was like, I couldn't believe what it can do and the possibilities for the good part, you know? Um, I think there's a great amount of advantages of this new technology, but I just want folks to be aware so that you're not, you don't get steamrolled in this uh, disruptive technology because it's all going to be disruptive. That's a, that's a fact. 
uh, chat GPT still needs to source images to modify. You're absolutely right. Again, this is all, the thing about a lot of this technology, it's very fluid. We're dealing with software. So it's not like hardware. It's a very, you know, they can improve these things a lot more um, uh, faster. It's more fluid. Yeah, they can. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg, man. I can't wait to. See, well, I can't wait. I mean, I can and I can at the same time. Um, I can't stand art directors pain in the butt. Yes, I haven't dealt with any pain in the butt art directors. Um, but I don't like people telling me how I do my thing. It's either you hire me for how I do it or you don't. You know what I mean? Uh, are you gonna let people go live? Oh, you know what? Um, let's go ahead and do that because I don't have Derek with me. So come on, folks. You know what I'm saying? I still have some news to share with you guys. Come on. All right. Let me share the live button with you. Um, invite here. We got to stay on topic, folks. Okay. Got to stay on topic. All right. Here we go. Where's my chat? Let me re refresh this thing. What's going on here, folks? All right, there we go. Uh, all right, if you want to jump in, feel free. There we go. Present. I want to share this window real quick. There we go. Awesome. All right. Let's get to the other piece of news I have here. Whoops. Turn off that. Okay. Let's get to this other piece of news. Um, boy, this news is really dragging. This is actually a really good one. This one, talking about films and filmmaking. This one's going to be pretty awesome. Um, check this out. I was really happy about this. this is actually about a piece of gear camera gear folks it's video but it's a gear nonetheless okay check this out um the mission impossible seven was shot on a three thousand that's right i said it hello three thousand dollar chinese cinema camera the z cam now i've i've heard of this brand haven't used it but I was like, yo, okay, so this multi-million dollar budget film, right? A-list actor, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible. Okay, so they shot the action scenes on a $3,000 camera. I had to read this. So um, they mostly shot on IMAX cameras, but several action scenes were captured using a Z-Cam E2 F6 which is 6K camera out of China. Isn't that something? And it only cost $3,000. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this with you all is that I'm really happy to see how top tier quality Hollywood ready um, um, cameras are becoming very affordable, very affordable. And not only that, it's out of the, uh, you know, the major brand. It's it's outside of the major brands we would think, like Red or Ari Alexa or something like that, a Venice or something like this. It's some Chinese camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to the Chinese folks out there. And um, and you know we all bought something from China, okay? All I have to say is Niwa, Godox, et cetera. Um, I think this is pretty awesome. I think it's really amazing because this camera does not sound like a slouch. And it obviously wasn't because of the fact that um, the folks at Mission Impossible chose this camera. All right. So they started off doing, um, what did they start off doing? They started, the, oh, well, here we go. Okay. So what was it called? The Z Cam A2. Oh, okay. So they did virtual reality cameras at first and then switched to some cinema cameras. And now they have the uh, the one that they use, the E2 F6 camera was used to shoot several of the actual scenes. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. The crew employed compact, affordable Z cams. 
as as what they, is known as crash cams. So basically, they said, "Hey, this camera is pretty damn good. It'll give us six K. We could do twelve bit Apple Pro Res Raw to an Atomos Ninja, right? It's cheaper than a Red Komodo." Uh, well, they didn't use the Komodo because the Komodo is Super 35. They want to stay in full frame. And this $3,000 camera was exactly what they used. I was I was like, yo, that's pretty smart, obviously, because if a $3,000 camera bashes or falls off a car, no one's going to complain as much as they would, you know, um, an IMAX camera or something. But uh, they used it on car pursuits. Real train crashes in the famous motocross skydiving stunts. Damn, that's a that's a great commercial. Great commercial for this brand. So it costs three thousand dollars, full frame, twelve bit ProRes RAW to HDMI. As I said, it can do six K, sixty frames a second, four K, hundred twenty frames a second, and it captures Z Cam Z RAW format. And 15 stops of dynamic range. It comes with Canon EF mount as standard. And then obviously you can attach like an M, micro four thirds, and PL as optional secondaries. Okay. So I bring this up because not only are things becoming way more affordable, and other brands are starting to find a niche, to Cooley's point, you know, playing a niche, finding your niche. Um, this is good for us because more brands that are making great stuff or great quality products makes it cheaper overall, I think. Hopefully competition, you know, out of the big three. But the big three we normally worry about is normally like in photography, the Sony, Canon, and Nikon, right? But for me, I like doing video. As many of you know, I use the Lumix uh, for video. And uh, when I see stuff like this this is pretty awesome um but ironically what camera can do most of that right now at full frame technically the s1h except it doesn't do 4k 120 and the s5 mark 2 x I would say the uh, S5 Mark II X actually would be the closest because that could do Apple. It could do ProRes RAW. It could do ProRes RAW internally. So can the S5 Mark II, but you have to get the um, uh, the download passcode pass or something to unlock it. But nonetheless, three thousand dollars. That's what they did, man. So if it's good for them. You know, it's good for your crappy short film. So let's be honest about that, okay? <laughs> All right. So that's for cinema. And since we we're talking about movies and stuff, John, I hope. Hope that's a little, little cool, little fun fact for you. Um, hold on, I will embrace AI. Yeah, <laughs> look at Bosman says I will embrace AI replacing politicians and judges. Well, I can't, I can't argue with that. Can't argue, man. I second that. Uh, I'll move to Malaysia and live out my golden years. You know what, man? I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I went upstairs. I went up to my family today, and I was like, I'm starting to see. You know, like, I just don't. The math ain't math. You know what I mean? In the long run, and uh, it's kind of crazy. So yes, Malaysia does sound nice. Anything uh, for me in HR would probably be happier. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> that's a funny one, Roy. Uh, Replace politicians with stuff, scarecrows. Yeah, the, the scarecrows at least serve a purpose. Hey, oh, so there you go. Um, Roy says, uh, the biggest problem with AI is that it's so easy to make it biased. Absolutely, again, it still has a, it's a most fundamental flaw, it's the human beings programming it. So that's unfortunate. And it's a minority set of humans programming it, feeding the technology, and everybody else is affected by it. That's kind of scary. So their their biases, their prejudices, their likes, their dislikes, all that's going to be fed into them. Right? All that's going to be fed into them. Uh, which memory card 
B is better, Pro Grade or Next Next of Rage? I don't know that card. I know Pro Grade, and for the Z eight Z nine things, or are they both good? Looks like. Uh, oh, okay. John answered a couple questions. Me personally, I use um, Lexar. I have a Lexar card, and then I have a Hoodman card. Actually, I got the Hoodman five hundred gig card when I bought the Z nine. It came with it for free. So never issue with either one, Lexar or them. So I'm sure these would be just as fine, quite honestly. But I'm sure someone will have an opinion. Uh, oh, okay. In food, you need a food stylist. Yeah, that's true. That's true. My wife is writer for schools and chat. GPT has increased her productivity by 40%. Yeah, but did she get a 40% raise? That's the sad part. So let's say she implements that. She's doing more work for them in the allotted time. I hope she's getting more compensated so she can do more work. Otherwise, they'll just expect you to do more work, and that becomes her new standard. So I don't know. So, John, let me know about that because, you know, I'm glad she can get more work done, and it makes it more productive, and it is an efficient tool. But the, company, the way corporations think is like, well, I'm not going to milk her for more. I can expect and demand more from her. or And then all of a sudden, oh, you can't meet that? Oh, you can't reach that? Well, we got somebody else? I don't know. I'm just saying. Got my tinfoil hat on today, clearly. I had a friend in New York City that went to culinary school just to cook for photo shoots. Oh, damn. All that skill and nobody eats the food. It's just, it's all like, okay, well, that part is bad. And Mozman, I once... um. For one year, I did catering, and I quit because of that reason. I saw so much wasted food, and we'd be in um, San Francisco City Hall, and then literally outside, there's homeless, and we couldn't give that extra food that no one ate but was cooked and prepared. We couldn't give it to them. Matter of fact, there's an ordinance that you cannot give it to them, but you can give it to the garbage. Okay? which was crazy to me. And after a while, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm sitting here feeding elitists, coming to these shindigs and parties, eating half a plate, treating most servers like crap, like they're, you know, they're better than us. And, and then all that wasted food and money spent, I was like, yo, I can't, I can't, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I stopped catering. So shout out to the people who have the strength to be a caterer, Okay. <laughs> I just couldn't do it, man. So, yeah, I saw that kind of waste, too. Um, there you go. Hey, hey, Fel, you, 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 uh, you've got a lot of options now. And add Lexar and Hoodman to, to that list. Okay? Add Lexar and Hoodman. Um, I've never had an issue, even though nobody mentioned them, I don't think. Let me see the list here. Oh, Delkin, Prograde. Yeah, Delkin's awesome too, 100%. And then, yeah, Prograde, yeah. I, honestly, I don't think you're going to go wrong. I, I just love Type B just because of reliability. I feel way more confident. Um, being seeing, been seeing a few Angel Bird issues lately. They are popular cards, but I had a bad experience. They do have a three to five year warranty through depending on a card. I've, I don't know about Angel Bird, but. I'll take Mozman at his word because he's a trustworthy character. So I'm going to just, yeah, if he's had issues, I'd probably stay away from that. Uh, I mostly just do photo shoots. Oh, okay. He just mostly does photo shoots. Hey, like I said, I use Lexar and my Hoodman has never done me wrong. 500 gig. That stays in my Z9 and my Z8. I tend to use Lexar 128 gig in there. And I also use the Lexar in my Lumix GH6. So. There you go. Um, okay, sounds like uh, Jeroy says we should all retire, and move in with John Ishi. Hey, all right. Well, we hey, we got hey, we can split the road. We we'll probably pay like five dollars or five bot uh, if if he's uh, in Tyler and John's in Tyler. It's like five bot. I don't know. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, cool. 
Oh, look at that. John says a beautiful luxury apartment with 500, 800, excuse me, what did I say? 500, that's $800 or less. Dang, that's crazy. $800 or less. Well, clearly I'm getting screwed over here in America. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, oh, Roy says Lex are okay now. They had problems at the beginning. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just sharing my experience. That's all. That's it. I'm not endorsing any particular um, Express CF Express type new cards, but I'm just saying from the experience. Um, okay, it looks like we're actually caught up with a thought. All right, let's get to this next part of the show. In the meantime, go ahead, smash that like, that share, subscribe. Come on now, folks. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, smash that like. Smash it. All right. Um, next thing we're going to be talking about, let's get this out of the way. Oh, just the FYI, this is the last piece of news. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. All right. This one was pretty cool. I was really happy about this here. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. As you all know, I shoot Lumix, right? Probably the only person in this, in this chat. <laughs> I'm probably the only person shooting freaking Lumix. But I tell you, I love Lumix. I love the colors, the ease. The ability to, to, to really push and pull their V-Log, the menu system. I just like Lumix. I don't care. And the stabilization is bar none the best. I don't care. Bar none the best stabilization comes out of Lumix. Full frame, micro four thirds, I don't care. It's phenomenal stabilization. But with that said, they've added more. They've added more. Uh, companies to their L Mount Alliance. Yeah, they've added more. So, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's sending a, a, a good signal in the market, what I think to me. Okay. So, they've added two new members they've added Astro Design and Samyang, which some of you may have heard, a third party brand that used to do manual lenses, but now they're doing. Um, um, autofocus lenses, finally, okay? And they are really about budget-conscious lenses. So I'm really happy about this news. Oh, and they do cinema lenses. hey -o. That's pretty awesome. And then Astro Design, which is a far less familiar brand because I've never heard of them. Uh, founded in 1977, specializing in real-time high-speed digital signal processing technology, including professional-grade AK video camera. Oh, shout out to them. So, that's companies six and seven, part of the L-Mount Alliance. Now, here's the thing. Call me silly, but the L-Mount Alliance is going to become a, a, um, uh, a lens mount like Micro Four Thirds was, where it's very open and <clears throat> allowed, you know, Olympus shooters to use uh, Lumix lenses, vice versa, and um, as well as like Black Magic and other camera brands. This is what L mount is going to be for full frame uh, shooters out there, whether it be video or photography. And I think this is great because. All these brands who are lesser known own minute shares of the market space in photography and videography um, can leverage their technology and really uh, come together. It's like a union, if you will, and be able to push and benefit from each other's advancements. So this is really smart right now because that's why um, Lumix um, can concentrate on making better performance bodies because they have their partnership with Sigma and they don't have to worry about spending too much R&D and a lot more money and time and investment in coming out with more lenses because Sigma has their entire uh, art series and contemporary series 
with L mount. And therefore they can just concentrate on uh, firmware updates and uh, creating a better camera body, you know, advancing to phase attack and stuff like that. So that's super, super smart. Um, and that also allows these companies with lesser budgets to, as I said earlier, leverage each other's technology. So shout out to small, oh, the, the ever growing L Mount Alliance. <laughs> All right. So there we go. That about wraps it up for the new, very long new segment. All right. Now, let me catch up. Wow, you guys can type in here, I tell you. Yeah. Oh, Manila comes in. The cinema lenses look great for the Lumix. That may make me get into Lumix full frame. Hey, you know what? Hold on. Let me do this real quick. This is part of... Manila, check this out, man. Check this out. Okay. Um, what's the thing? Oh, okay. Here we go. I, this is not really a product highlight, but I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Let's talk about it. Check this out, man. Come on, folks. This blew me away. All right. Uh, let me share my screen. Window. Cool. Check this out. It's a feature. On the Lumix S5 Mark II and Mark II X, it's called Real Time LUT. Okay, LUT stands for Lookup Table, which is basically like a video preset. Now, in your cinema cameras, you can easily pre-install your LUT. You can see what it looks like when you're shooting vlog and and what LUT you want to use. So when you get home, you have the exposure. Everything's already looking good for that LUT that you previewed. Okay, that you plan to use in color grade and etc. Now they have this new feature called real time LUT, where you can film, use one of those LUTs, and it bakes it into the video. Now Derek was like, "Oh, I wouldn't. I don't want to use that. I don't want to bake it into the video." But there's a huge advantage to it. Okay, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you as soon as I get to this piece of content here. Check this out. All right. Check this out, everybody. So as you can see right here, I created all these little videos uh, from the camera on down. I shot while visiting Mike's camera. I shot it with the Lumix S5 Mark II. I shot it vertically. Okay. Let me grab, dang it. Let me grab the camera. So with Lumix cameras, when you oh, sugar honey ice cream, when you shoot vertically, the camera already orientates the video vertically. So when you drag and drop that footage, it's already vertical. Okay, you don't have to turn it and rotate it in Premiere. It's already vertical because it knows you shot it vertical. All right. Now, I put on. Uh, Real time a LUT. I chose the LUT that I had programmed in here. I have three of them in there. And I was like, damn, this thing looks already cinematic. It looks awesome. Right. So, so what I did was literally within 30 minutes, I shot tons of B roll vertically with my camera in 4K at 24 frames a second and 60. What did I do? I did 24 frames a second and I did 60 frames a second. Correction, 120 frames a second. So I, I, I was shooting the vertical all over the place, just getting cool B-roll at Mike's camera. And I was like, dang, this stuff looks awesome. So check this out, everybody. Um, look, at, look, look at how this is a vertical video I can capture with the Lumix S5. And then through the app, I took those images and, and downloaded it to my phone to my phone. So now when I want to post content, the quality of these images are awesome. And it already has my, because of real time LUT, my, my uh, LUT is baked in, therefore making it look already cinematic in the video. Now what I did is I, I recorded at an MP, uh, MP4. Because if you did MOV, you would have to bring it into uh, Premiere, edit it or whatever, and then export it as an MP4. I recorded it as an MP4, and then boom, I'm getting high-quality vertical content 
Okay. Alrighty, out of the camera using just the kit lens. I use this lens here. It's a kit lens. The 20 to 60 millimeter, I uh, I think it's an F 3.5 to 5.6 lens. So I didn't use anything high end. I used exactly what you would get out of the box. Okay, shot vertically. And look at this juicy footage. I love it. Look at that. With the LUT installed makes my video content look very cinematic and already graded. It looks like it's graded. So here is the full Mamma Jamma. This is what I created. So I, I, I did all these little clips here, right? I did this. Look, look at this slow-mo handheld. Look at that stabilization, folks. Look at that stabilization. Crazy handheld. Okay. Now I took all these clips and then I made a whole little video, which some of you may have already seen. It's one of my latest shorts that I just posted, I think, yesterday on YouTube. But check it out. Okay. Look at this thing right here. Look at that. Oh, man. See, now I can create engaging content right out of the camera, straight to my phone, and then I edit it using an app called CapCut. All right. And you can do the same thing too. The point is that the quality is far better recording the footage right out of my camera than on my cell phone. And I was able to do it with a LUT, okay, baked into the footage. And therefore, it looks cinematic. I can't believe it. That's so cool. So anyway, I just geeked out over this. And I did this within under 30 minutes. I did everything, cut it, edit, post it, everything. So this is just cool stuff. So you can do the same thing. You record tons of clips, let's say during your vacation, wherever. John could talk about the $800 rent that, <laughs> that you need to pay, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then your content looks awesome. So shout out to the, um, shout out to Lumix S5 Mark II, and it's called Real Time LUT. That's such a cool creative feature. Um, I wouldn't do it for films and stuff, right, for my short film. Um, but I would bake it in for social media content 100%. It worked out so well. So anyway, so that's the little product highlight for the moment, folks. For the moment. All right. Uh, I know I got con. Let me take this one off here. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. It said, did Verhagen win that 1B lottery? Damn. Well, oops, look. <laughs> um, does the Z8 do the vertical shooting thing for video? I don't think so. I know all the menus change. But when you drag and drop it, I have to test it out. That's a very good question, Phil. So let me let me uh, double check on that. But I know for sure um, Panasonic started doing that during the S5, during the S5 or the G100 launch. They start uh, they started doing that where if you shoot a video vertical, it's actually a vertical video. Drop it right into your timeline. Um, where Keish says, "How is weather in California?" It's pretty tempered where, where where I'm at, but I'm in the Bay Area, so we always get like fog, and it's always pretty chill. I think today was like 80, you know what I mean? And I'm in Oakland, so I'm by the Bay. Um, I think it's like 90 where Derek's at, and he's a little bit more inland. But shout out to you, Rakesh. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Royce, I can't remember the last time shot video vertical. You know, um, you may not, but... If me, I, I use social media to brand my myself, obviously. And um, it's imperable that if you're looking to brand yourself, vertical videos is the way to go. They expect to see it. Uh, they're used to seeing it. and um, But this is a way for you to step up the big quality of your vertical videos versus shooting them all with your iPhone. All right? Uh, boop, boop, boop. Because as you can see, the bokeh is way smoother than it is uh, using that cinematic mode, which is not bad, but still. Uh, vertical video, nearly as good as using a smartphone. <laughs> it's actually way better just because, again, you're using a larger sensor, a better lens. 
um, and everything else as well. Um, I'm using a LUT on Vlog. So it's like, I don't know. It's just kind of a bit of me. I like it. Uh, it's way better than my average vertical video quality. Um, the quality is far better than, than what I can get out of the iPhone, basically. Nick comes in. Hey, Nick. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate that. Uh, J-Rod says, that's a lot of film. Absolutely. It was their shelf, and I was just like panning. But I, what blew me away was how still um, the stabilization was on that. That was crazy. And again, the entire video was shot handheld. Wow, they actually have film. Yes, that's what I'm saying, Moz, man. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that come in for film. They make a lot of money off of just not only selling film, processing it, and everything else, and making prints. Uh, that's more film that I've seen in years. Yeah, that man, they, they don't play up here. They do love film, and they love looking and buying film cameras. It's a nice thing up here. Uh, my local store doesn't ha even have that much film, and they buy and sell a lot of film cameras. Man, they got we got a lot up here. Um, Mike's camera has four locations in the Bay Area, and all of them are rocking and rolling with film. But it's crazy, and a lot of it is younger, the Gen Z folks and younger millennials. They're out here. I'm telling you, they, they that's what they're keeping it alive. These young people that are laughing at. Uh, Roy, a light might have improved the video more than a lot. I've improved, but I'm not running. The, the, the purpose of that video um, wasn't making a video. The purpose was the real time LUT feature and what it can do. The, um, I was about to say, I was just running around shooting this. The, during the stuff while the store was in business, clearly. So I wasn't really aiming for for something like that. But yeah, that's a good point. So I'll I'll think about that next time. But um, when folk, here's the thing. Here here's the thing, Roy. If you add one thing, then another thing, and another thing, people won't do anything. Just make it, you know, K I S S. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So like, if I tell people. What I just said, oh, you can do everything I did by doing this and getting creative with your shots. You're more inclined to do that than now. Oh, now I got to get a light? What kind of light? Is this enough light? Who's going to hold the light? Where do I place the light? And then you already know no one's going to do anything. That's the way humans are, especially nowadays. We just talked about small attention spans, right? So that you might you may be right, but my point is for folks to get up and to see like what you, what is possible that you can do to create vertical videos outside of your cell phone. That's the most important part. Most people don't, when they create those videos, they don't do it with all sorts of lights and the gimmicks and whatnot. They do it just this, shoot, call it a day, post it. And that's how dumb simple it needs to be, the process. Otherwise, folks, just, most of them won't uh, invest in learning how to do it right. But good, great suggestion though. I appreciate it. Uh, Manila comes back. I wonder if that is usable for stock video. For stock, we only need 15 seconds of graded video. Hey, man, you know what, uh, Manila? Do it. You tell me. Uh, go for it, right? Uh, what's that site that Jared Poland always promotes about stock footage or stock photos or whatever? But if they take stock footage, I mean, that actually might be a smart idea because I use story blocks. And a lot of their content, I haven't looked up for vertical content, but a lot of their content is just straight up uh, 60 by 20, right? 4K, HD, et cetera. So with that said, there may, I'm sure there's a need for stock footage that is, that, that's vertical. You know, go for it, man. Um, do you remember Mofet Airfield? I went to the last air show there. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that airfield. I don't know that one. I'm sorry. Moffitt Airfield. Why do I know? Why does that sound familiar? Let me see. Let me see. Oh, a mountain view. Oh. 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 No. 
I've never been there. Man, look at that hangover. Wow. Moffat Air Force. Yeah, I, I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I was saying it wrong, clearly. People took some nice pictures there. They took some nice pictures. I haven't been there. That's awesome, though. Yeah, a lot of nice pictures on uh, Google, though. A lot of nice pictures. Um, Roy says, everyone expects vertical video to have been shot on an iPhone. Everyone does, but that content creator I showed you earlier, uh, Philip, the food content creator, all his vertical videos are made are shot with a cell phone. You could tell that the field is smooth, the transition of the focus thing when it goes from the product uh, to him is really smooth. Um, the quality is smooth. The low light performance of it when he shoots like not in a perfect, uh, not perfect, but more of a darker environment doesn't break down in the shadows. So I'm just saying, and I notice other high end uh, uh, brands or companies or corporations when they make a, a, a vertical video, it's not shot with a cell phone. It's just not shot with a cell phone. Yeah. Uh, a lot, everyone expects verticals to be shot on a phone, but most of those people don't have the budget to do what I just did or what bigger companies are doing. But they'll pay for this. They'll pay for that quality for sure over my, I'll show up to a gig with this goddamn thing. You know what I mean? No. I mean, that's cool for in the pinch, a little bit more realism, but that is like commercial ready quality uh, video coming out of that camera. And go look at some of the, um, you know, Fortune 500 companies' vertical videos. They're not shot on a cell phone. They are not. A lot of them are shot on an actual camera. Like a actual camera. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. Rakesh, does anyone know whether Nikon P7000 or 7100 had a good CCD set? Well. Oh. Okay, I don't know about that, but I'm glad that all of you are helping him out with that. And yeah, I saw that. I saw that, J Rod. Um, uh, Moffett, Moffett Field was at the bottom of the bay. Yeah, I, I saw that. I haven't been there though. I like this this weird building they had out there. I guess it's like the framing of the hangar. That's the hang there's no walls or anything. Um, Roy, AI will make the need uh, the need for much more stock footage and images. Good point. To feed and educate the AI. That's a good point. But will you get paid for it? No. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what's funny? I got a notification yesterday from Google uh, about my business profile. And they're like, uh, it's best to uh, regularly upload high-end quality photos to your business profile to help customers find you. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm teaching AI. I'm teaching. Uh, I'm I'm uploading photos to Google, and they're probably coming up with their own AI, whatever the hell, Chat ZPT, and by uploading all my photos and whatnot and leaving a caption of the description. And I'm like, wow. So everybody's in the game. Um, I guarantee you meta is way more far ahead than we think they are. They're probably just seeing how that GPT is adopted and let them go through all the rough patches and then they're going to come out hard as hell, right? They're going to come out. Uh, meta is going to come out hard because they have all of our photos, all the information of our history over the past, what? 10 years, 12 years, whatever this, how old Meta is. They have all that life experience, human life experience. Oh my God. The amount of information Meta has can have a chat GPT in like two freaking seconds. Uh, yes, AI would need to continually snack on real artist work. Yes, you're absolutely right. We won't. It doesn't mean we're getting paid for it. <laughs> it, it, it AI is not like, hey, how much? Uh, you know, we're going to give you a buck or two or three or four if we decide to use it. No, but you know, 
it will be charged obviously if you or i use it for commercial usage but like chat they just they're going to swallow up all our photos which they have been technically if you look at the bylines and the uh bylines or bylaws whatever the not bylaws the um, terms and conditions of instagram we're giving them usage and rights to our photos that's why it's a free freaking app <laughs> this is interesting uh and when ai gets a grip on it we will not know if it's plagiarizing our work. I know that's the scary part. Who's to say? Who's to say? It's crazy. Excuse me. I'm trying not to curse. Try not to curse. Okay. It's not working. All right. It, I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to, you know, keep us aware. Keep us, you know, so we're not keeping our heads in the stand being in denial. All right. Ironically, all this AI talk. Is somewhat about today's main topic, which I've totally blew right past. But I'm digging this conversation. Shout out to all of you. Yeah. Shout out to all of you for this great stimulating conversation back and forth. I did leave a link down below. Or up above, rather. Uh, for anyone who wants to join the conversation, it's all good. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about today's topic here. And it's about tips and tricks to keep yourself safe as a photographer. Let me share a little story, okay? This past weekend, I began production on my next short film, okay? Saturday and Sunday. Saturday went off without a hitch, filmed great, used the Lumix S1H and the S5 Mark IIx, uh, uh, S5 Mark II. Awesome. Planning was made it so smooth, like the production smooth. And I spent a lot of time planning for this. We were in pre-production for like two months. I was really happy on the over planning and how it helped save a lot of time. Smashed it. Day two came. We we're excited. We we're ready. Uh, I'll make a long story. Uh, turn this long story short. Ultimately. We got our cars broke into, okay? We were filming in Oakland, okay? That's the, that's the first, that's the first red flag. We were filming in Oakland. The first one was, uh, the, uh, the first day of production was in Oakland, but we were in a location, a, um, um, an Airbnb that I rented for the day. Well, two days, three nights, uh, technically, but, um, what did I do? Uh, two, oh, yeah, it was two days, two nights, the way Airbnb works. But um, we rented that. And then um, let me show you guys what had happened here. This is a very sad situation. Derek was with me because on Sunday he, he doesn't work. Now, um, here we go. You can see right here. Bam! Crash! Boom! That's right. So what happened, we were on, uh, uh, we were at one, a location. We noticed some riprap, at least Derek brought it to my attention. I was so focused filming. I was in tunnel vision with the actor, getting new shots, finding new shots to get, getting that, recording audio. I had a lot going on. So I'm the cinematographer and the, um, the director of this, of this project. And what happened, so brought to my attention, hey, there's these creeping, um, uh, suspicious looking individuals that keep walking by where we're filming at, like in terms of like across the street and looking at us. So I said, all right, I don't care. Wrap it up. We're, we're moving. We're going to go somewhere else. We wrapped it up. Everybody jumped. We had two cars and both cars were packed full of us. We drive to another spot, unfortunately not far enough and go figure. I think they followed us. We got out our car. We walked about a block away to the, to the spot I wanted us to shoot at, and I hear my car alarm go off. Okay, I know my car alarm, and I said, "Damn!" And my hands were full. I had a gimbal, a camera, and all this other stuff. Derek, that's my car alarm. Just go check real quick. Go check. I was hoping to God it was somebody who just bumped their car and you know couldn't get to their car alarm fast enough, and it's just start going off. Sure enough, he comes back. With his, I mean, I've never seen his face look that damn serious, okay? Shout out to Derek. 
And he's like, they got it to the car. I was like, fuck. So we all run back. And then the picture you see right here is what we came back to right here. All right. And they didn't get anything, thank God, because all my gear was in the, uh, we had um, the most important gear, lenses, camera bodies, etc. were all with us. Thank God. I had um, the wardrobe consultant. Um, he carried my lenses. I had my backpack with my camera and stuff like that. So it was like, we, we were good to go. Okay. What was in there was my boom mic, audio recorder, um, boom pole, stuff like that. That wouldn't suck. Um, but they didn't get in there. Smashed the window. He thought he popped the trunk, but he popped the hood, which triggered my alarm. And that's why by the time Derek got back, they were running away. But before hitting up my car, they hit my first assistant director's car, which was 50 feet behind mine. And she has a VW bug. And I'm guessing, you know, uh, our alarm didn't go off, but they smashed her window and they took a duffel bag, which only had like shoes in it. So with that said, that's what happened. And that's what made me come up with this week's topic about um, what ways we can be safe out here as a photographer and hell is it even safe. And I've mentioned this before, like how photographers are, are it's more of a reoccurrence that they're getting held up, to take their gear while shooting on location. And um, this is another case in point. We weren't doing photography, but we were doing, you know, videography. We were, we were shooting a film. And we were not in the hood. We weren't anywhere. Like, this is actually, a, it's called Adam's Point. This is actually a more working class, you know, it's not a bad, bad, bad place to be in, in part of Oakland. But this is happening so regular. Now, in my driver's side window, he tried to hit it. It didn't break, but it cracked. So today I had to just replace that one. So I ended up having to replace two windows and I have to get them retinted tomorrow. So this whole situation, beginning of production of my film, it's already costing me 700 bucks to replace all this stuff right here, okay? And it got me really thinking about the long-term, my long-term strategy as a photographer, what I should and should not do and where that should be. So, I asked, uh, uh, okay. Oh yeah, that's right. El Mount Alliance, I'm telling you. Uh, hold on. I, I got to catch up to you guys. You guys are going. Okay. <laughs> Roy says, safety is a tripod with spikes. Yeah, they don't, they don't, trust me, they don't, they don't allow, they wouldn't get that close to you. They'll just shoot you here. It's Oakland. They'll shoot you. I'm telling you, I've heard stories. Uh, you try to stop them. Uh, selective imagery is in the house. <laughs> Hello, Robert. Looks like I, I walked into a rant. <laughs> well, right now it's not a rant, but I'm just sharing the story of what happened about, um, recently and my gear almost got stolen and uh, thankfully we had it on us but they were watching they are watching us you you jump out and you got tons of gear or whatever people are watching man i mean granted a lot of you may not be here in the bay area but in the bay area it's so regular that cars get broke into it's freaking ridiculous okay Th this makes it Four windows I've had to replace in just 12 months. Ha! <laughs> All right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Roy, someone has to rent while truck is out of action. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just sharing stories, you know? Uh, but good seeing you, uh, Jeff, man. Thank you very much. Robert can be the guest ranter on our live stream. There you go. Ew. Uh, selective image, uh, Jeff, um, I need your email. I'm the hell I get your email. Are you selective imagery on Insta? Let me check you out on Insta. Okay. Selective imagery. 
Is this you? I don't think so. Nope. One follower. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Jeff, what are you on um on Instagram here? What are you on Instagram? Uh, let me see if he says it. Oh, he isn't on Instagram. Okay, well, that's a good reason why I can't find him. Uh, I, I wanted to message him. Hey, look at that. See, I, I have positive. Look at my feed here. I purposely programmed my feed to be positive. And I, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Sesame Street is still my thing. Once more, I, I do follow their Instagram. Um, but you know what? There's so much negativity in the world. I'd rather follow Sesame Street than half these bums on Instagram. I'll be quite honest. Um, and of course, fitness stuff because I'm always at the gym. Okay. So if you're not talking about positivity, inspiration, fitness, something like that, or watching this kid dance right here, I don't want to hear about it. All right. Anyway, so, um, Jeff, if possible, if you could, you know what? Here we go. Here we go. Type it right here. Uh, so like uh, there we go. Uh, send me an email. Um, Jeff, I'm about to um, I'm tagging you right now. S send me a quick email if possible, because. Saturday is sometimes I'm always, I always had projects like this past Saturday. I was filming, obviously, so it's hard to jump onto a stream. Um, but there you go. I tagged you. Go ahead and uh, if you can, when, when 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 it's convenient, send me an email, and then uh, let me know like that morning of like, hey, I'm about the stream, and then send me a link. You know what I mean? Because I wouldn't mind jumping on. I jump on Malcolm's on Monday every once in a while. So I'd love to jump on yours as well if you want me to. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Here's a little guilty pleasure, folks. Here's a little guilty pleasure. I'm highly entertained sometimes by these Sesame Street things because you have to remind yourself as a creative, as an artist. Here's another rant, folks. Don't forget to enjoy the process and art of photography like a child does when they play with two sticks. Like, we forget that as adults, we get bitter and old, you know, we get stuck in our ways, but you really gain years by, you know, enjoying certain things, your passions, like a child does when it comes to playing. And that's why I like Bob Ross is like one of my biggest influences as a creative, because his approach was always like a, like a innocent child approach with playing with blocks. And I really try to not forget that. And that's why I follow these particular things. I started Fraggle. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if some of you know, but uh, Jim Henson's Fraggle Rocks. I started following that channel because I'm like, I need to. If I'm going to be on social media, besides posting, I want to see reinforcements and positivity of, of good things. Right? There are some good things happening out here besides my window. You know, <laughs> the windows getting broken into. And and um, so it's a little guilty pleasure. What can I say? Sesame Street. Shout out to Sesame Street. So, um, awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, you no rush, man. Um, just feel free to email me so that at least we're connected via email, and you keep me posted. Let me know what the topic is, and then I can be prepared to jump on or just jump on. You know, whatever. I grew up with Sesame Street. Ain't no shame in the Muppet game. That's right, baby. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> the Muppets have, uh, just like our firmware, they've, the, uh, Sesame Street is so different, but yet so, it's something innocent and playful. It's like, I had my daughter watch Sesame Street. We didn't do uh, Barney. I was like, nah, I'm cool with the Barney. But we for sure did some Sesame Street. We did SpongeBob Sesame Street. And uh, what was what else did we do in the house when she was a kid? Those were the two major. Um, all right, so it looks like we're caught up here, believe it or not. I'm really appreciating everybody's engagement. This is this has actually become a uh, more positive um, stream than I thought it would be because the topic was was not as uh, happy. But I'm glad you guys made it made it very fun for me. I really appreciate it. I'll be quite honest because. 
while shooting on location and that happening, I left uh, the past three days. I've been um, battling a little bit with um, anxiety, quite honestly. And um, I've been questioning like, what do I want to do in the next few years, what I want to do in 10 years, obviously, stuff like that. And where I want to be, because <clears throat> being here in Oakland, uh, as things get more crazier, it's 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 I have to overthink what I'm doing whenever I leave the house, the safety, etc. You know, car breaking into they they do all all sorts of crazy stuff happens here. Shootings on freeways. A little baby got shot. Two gang members were shooting at each other car to car. And hits a kid in, in the back seat. Like it is wild as as f. So a lot of times I just go to the gym. Like this morning, I go to the gym for about three hours, do some errands, and run back home for dear safety because people are so triggered so easily. People are willing to take, rob, whatever it may be. And as a photographer, we're walking out there. You know, this right here is twenty two hundred dollars, right there. Plus my phone, plus my wallet, and this is the basics. Let alone a couple of lenses, etc. I, I, I'm like at the point where I don't bring stuff because I'm like, how do I make sure I don't look like a photographer? How do I how do I stay safe? I always carry a pocket knife on me because in California you can't do nothing. You know, I'll keep a pocket knife. You know, and it's funny. It's just crazy to have to live. With a my, mindset like that of constant cautiousness, conscious, constantly being, who's this? Who's that? Hey, wh wh why are you coming closer to me? Even if they might be, one time somebody walked closer to us just to be curious, curious about what we're doing, innocently curious. Hey, what do you guys think? Oh, that's cool. And I, and I was like, I had to put my hand up. I'm saying like, hey, stay, stay right there. What's going on? You know, like I had to keep a distance. And let them know that I acknowledge their awareness. So if you come any closer, I'm ready for you. And I'm like, what kind of living is that? And that's what I noticed this week after the car break in. Thankfully, the police actually came. They were real nice. Did a great job taking our reports, etc. Shout out to the OPD who never gets any shine. And um, they did a great job. No complaints to them. And I'm like, now I'm so, like, I've woken up at 12 at night, gone outside just to check my car. Just to check my car. You know, the window's still there. And I was telling my mom, I said, Ma, it's so sad that in the morning I wake up and I'm happy that my windows are still there, that my stuff is still there, my whatever. And as a photographer, we're a target. They know this. They could take our gear and flip it and, you know, get they don't know what they're grabbing, really, or the quality of it. But the point is, they take it from us, they rob us for it, and it's happened more and more and more and more, especially here in the Bay Area. And I'm trying to figure out what ways to keep us protected. Clearly, your cameras are not worth your um, life, right? That I'm not saying. But we should be more aware that there are more desperate people when they... The, when the economy and financially the haves and have nots become even more wider right um, that's not going to be good for us when we're hanging out with our $5,000 cameras we're happy to talk about on this here YouTube uh, one thing I'm going to do is start putting in those air tags in each of my camera bags that's what I'm buying put it one in each because I realized that uh, if they had took one of my camera bags and the, when the police came, I could literally say that's where they are and I would go with them and they would probably help me get my stuff back. So air tags is something I'm definitely going to be investing in. And then also, it's like there's no way in heck I'm bringing out the Z9 on location in Oakland or San Francisco. Heck no. That's a fat no. You know what I mean? Um, Cooley says, come to Indiana. Hey, dude, you know, honestly, I really gave it some serious thought today. I was like, I just don't, I was talking to my twin brother. I was like, I don't see the benefit of being here anymore. I don't see the benefit. I don't see the benefit financially. I don't see a better 
um, career wise as a photographer, I don't see it being better for safety. That's for sure. Or just ease of mind. I mean, can I just live? I, I mean, we're getting to a point where it's like, it's already hard enough to somewhat survive as a creative, as a, as a, as a photographer. That's hard enough. We're battling AI and all sorts of shit. And then now we got to worry about our fellow neighbors robbing us blind and killing us for it. And it's happening so often. It's crazy. Dude, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. They followed us from that other. Anyway, it was, it, it's, it's, I don't know. So Indiana might, might be better. I don't know. But I heard you guys got some weather issues. So I don't know. I love the weather here. <laughs> Uh, but I certainly have thought about leaving. I thought about Vegas, thought about Colorado. And I visited Tucson last year, and I did like it. And I like warm weather, so shout out to Tucson. Uh, Fell says, I might buy a Jansport bag and put cubes in it for safety reasons here in New York City. Um, that's actually a great idea. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Hold on. Yeah. Buy Jansport. Look like a rubber bag. Buy the cubes. You know who sells them to? Um, a think tank. They sell the in-bag cubes. We could put our gear in there all in a day. That's why a lot of the air bags I leave with now, like I have um, the smaller, uh, not a cross bag, what do you call it? This uh, A sling bag from... Um, from um, oh, Peak Design. And it's a smaller one. It just looks like a regular, like a crossover bag. But yet I could put my Z8, one or two lenses and call it a day, you know? And uh, showing up with all the flashes and this, that, and a third. Man, I'm going to need at least Derek and somebody else with us just to, just to keep it safe if I'm bringing flashes and everything. It really stinks because I like in San Francisco, and I love Oakland, but the people in Oakland are making it too wild. It's crazy. Man, I'm telling you, I can't wait to vote this coming year. Uh, I think the answer to tonight's question depends a lot on where we are and where we're shooting. I tend to roam around with my 90-pound German Shepherd with guns, with guns trump all. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, Good thing about a 90-pound German Shepherd, they, they'll be more cautious to come close to you. You know what I mean? They'll think twice, more or less, than you're just sitting there by yourself, that's for sure. But yes, absolutely. We have to, I think now, that's a great point, uh, Greg. Shout out to you. All right. Uh, that's a great point. We have to be more, even more conscious about where we're shooting, the time the time of day we're shooting, and where we're shooting. And where we're shooting, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I need maybe I need that German ship. Use a Dollar General bag with some foam cutouts. Yeah, I think that's to um, Fell's point where it's like get a Jansport bag, and then get those inserts, those cube inserts that Think Tank sells, and put them in there. When you come to Texas, you will be more worried about the snakes. We all have uh, we all have sidearms too, but the snakes. Hey, <laughs> so shout out to Malcolm and the, and the sidearm snake uh, situation you've got there. But you know, um, I'm sure not as much of this crazy shit that happens here happens in Texas. I hate this. I can't believe I'm. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but it's crazy. I'm, 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 I don't know what to say. It's crazy. I think uh, shurikens are illegal. Oh, shurikens uh, are illegal these days, though. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but I still carry a pocket knife, you know, but that means they have to get close enough. And most of the time they're not. You know, but I still do, just in case I have some sort of fighting chance to protect myself. Um, Jeff comes in, I guess, don't take more gear than you need. And have it with you and not in the car. Have a group of people with you. Carry some mace and maybe some extra things. Carry a Bible. And uh, I mean, how much more do you want us to bring with us, uh, Jeff? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's sad that we have to come up with this laundry list of tons of stuff 
um, in order to keep it safe for a big photo shoot, but you make a lot of great points, right? That's what I meant earlier. Carry exactly what you need. One or two lenses. Uh, I've second guessed bringing my flash just for this reason. Not if it's a big flag that I'm doing a photo shoot, right? Uh, don't leave any. I don't have anything in my car. I don't even leave a napkin in that thing. Okay, I do not. And carry some mace and maybe something extra. Yeah, my extra is at least a knife, you know. But um, again, California, the criminals have more rights here than the than uh, law-abiding citizens. I'm I'm learning that very quickly, very quickly. Uh, I cut my bag liner and hid them inside so it's not easy to find. Oh, that's that's oh, that's pretty creative. Uh, sh- All right, maybe on your next stream, show me what you mean by that, Malcolm. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, okay. You know, this is a great idea. Higher security for shoots that may be high risk or at least travel in larger groups. Okay. For the former... That's a bit unrealistic and a high cost, unfortunately. But yes, uh, higher security for my filming, 100%. I already thought about it. I was like, I would want at least two armed security uh, during my filming. If I'm filming on location, ergo uh, off-duty police officers, okay? But during the lockdown in downtown Oakland, they did just that. It was a news crew. They had an off-duty officer. They just, some person came, whipped around the corner, jumped out and shot the officer when they were trying to rob the crew and left. He's unfortunately no longer here. But yes, I thought about that, Craig. I just have to figure out, um, I just have to figure out what the cost is and stuff like that. Unfortunately, that makes it more expensive. Craig says, dude, Colorado is my dream. Hey, <laughs> me is I, I love hiking. I love nature, something like that. So I thought of Colorado is kind of central. It's like not too far from the bay. My family. I can go back to New York, back to another family. So it's like, I thought about Colorado. I thought about Vegas too, but Vegas is like, it's a city that shouldn't exist. And <clears throat> what I mean by that is Vegas, if you left it alone in it to itself, it would disappear eventually. It's a fucking desert. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a desert. It shouldn't be there. So if if something happened with water, all the stuff, drought, etc., whatever, it would like you'd be in serious, serious trouble. So, and it's growing very fast. So I'm not sure, um, you know. But the pricing price is much better than the Bay Area, though. So shout out to Vegas for that. But it's not out of the question. It's nice and close. It's only a hundred dollar plane ticket to get there and back, so it's not really that far. Uh, you can see Gustavo in Colorado. I okay, I'll check it out. I don't know Gustavo. Let me see. Gustavo. Gustavo. Oh, Gustavo, Colorado. Okay. Uh. Huh. Oh, I guess that's not a place. Maybe that's a person. <laughs> Clearly, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm an idiot. But if, if Gustavo, who's Gustavo? Is there somebody in here with that, uh, Jeff? Let me know. Uh, fly spray works like mace, especially if you light it. Oh, that's. Oh, okay. So I'm talking about torch him. Torch him. Uh, Manila comes in. I feel you. My mom lives in uh, South Central LA. Wow. Hold on. She loves her neighborhood, but always worries. Absolutely. Um, and that's the unfortunate part. Um, you know, it really is. Uh, what's funny, Manila, is that I was actually watching a video today about the Philippines, quite honestly. So, hey, yo. So, go figure. She might want to come there. I'm trying to figure out get, get a ticket, get the hell out of here. Um, I just want to live, man, you know, as an artist, and I feel like my life's in, uh, I don't you know, being rich is great. 
if that ever happens, you know. But I just love doing what I do. I love this live streaming. I love creating content. I just want to just do what I enjoy doing and live a law-abiding life. I mean, call me boring, whatever. Uh, we definitely can't walk around with Peter McKinnon type of bags these days. These aren't times to look cool and show off. You're absolutely right. The more it doesn't look like a camera bag, the better off you are. That's that's the way it is. You know what I mean? And um, it's sad. It really is. Uh, Mozman says, Tucson is a neat place. Lots of great places to shoot around there. Too hot in the summer, though. You know, I went there in September for um, work for uh, Panasonic. And um, I, it was like 103, 105. I was in heaven. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I loved it. My my joints, my knees, my back, my legs, my muscles, it felt so good. I loved it. I really did. Um, yeah. Give me this shade, a beer, good book or something. I, I do. When I was there, I was hanging out in this salt pool, this salted like pool. It was crazy. I was living the best life. I was like a brown otter in the pool, just, just hanging out, you know. So anyway, it was great. Um, shout out to Tucson. Um, <laughs> get a SpongeBob backpack with Think Tank Two Wizards. Hey, now that hey that that's a great suggestion, Craig. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say I have to give you a clap, a round of applause for that one. Okay. Um, he said, uh, Roy says snakes are pretty harmless. They are usually more afraid of you. You are them, but don't wear shorts. Good point. Yeah. Unfortunately, when they're afraid, they're gonna attack, right? So I don't wanna I don't want that to happen. Yes, I am I almost stepped on a rattlesnake hiking. I was like, oh shoot. I was there with my daughter and her boyfriend, and that thing was camouflaged. It was a rattlesnake for sure. Um someone needs to make a bag that looks like a clear bag, but actually isn't a clear bag. It looks like you're carrying book when inside is all your gear. Damn, that's such a great idea, man. Wow, you guys are coming with it right now. That's for Moz, man, right there. That's a great one. Uh, RBJ goes hard in the paint. Yeah, I carry my pistol on me. Hey, -o, okay. There you go. That's what R RBJ is getting a little heat for him. Take my life out there. Yeah. Um, and then we got Malcolm. Need special boots around here. Rattlers will get right through most heavy boots. They sell actual snake boots for getting off the main path. Oh, I didn't even know about that. I'll look that up. Maybe they have some on Amazon. I love hiking. I haven't run into too many snakes here, but one time I did, man, at um, Mount Tam. And uh, that thing was camouflaged right on the edge of the trail in, like, the brush. I was like, holy shit. Dang. Um, I can afford to lose gear, but any images are packed away safe. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, man. I thought about it. I was like, I would ask, them, can I at least get my SD card out of that? <laughs> you know, uh, that would have been hard. Um, hiding air tags. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, like, open up the... Um, Open up the, let's say, the sides of your bag, put air tags in it, and then seal it back up, maybe something like that. Because remember, initially, for they're not looking for, they, they don't know what they're grabbing. They're grabbing it and they're running. In that first 30 minutes, you could track where it's going to, or, you know, maybe even up to an hour before they really dig through and all this other shit. They're not smart like that. But they'll give you enough time to call the police and say, hey, hey here it is. Um, Moz, man, just hire Steve. Oh, that, you know what? You add, oh, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of Steven Seagal? Hold on. Do I have a chop suey somewhere around here? No, I do not. But I'm going to give myself a Mario Lewis. Okay? That's what I should have done. <laughs> Now, I would hire, hey, Mozman, I would hire Steven Seagal from the late 80s, early 90s. Not today, okay? That dude looks nuts, okay? 
that dude right now looks nuts. When I see him doing his martial arts, I'm like, who are you kidding, man? <laughs> uh, Gustavo is a person who frequents Chuck's show, Nature Photography. Oh, okay. Shout out to him. All right. Well, you know. Okay. I got to check him out. He probably, If he goes to your show, eventually I'm sure I'll meet him. But I, I don't think I, I know of him. Um, we can stay at home and just let AI take care of everything. Of course. Why didn't I come up with that? Okay. Shout out to J-Rod for making sure AI takes my job and your job all at the same time. Hello. Okay. But yeah, we can eventually it may just do that. Right. Is it, uh, uh, do I meet you at the studio? No, you're going to meet my computer named um, AI. Uh, and then you just tell them what kind of photos you want. Uh, all right, here we go. Craig says, uh, what about Austin, Texas? Lots of creatives from Cali migrating there. I, I, I've heard a lot. Actually, I met someone at the Sony Alpha community event that was that lived in uh, that's from Austin, and he said the same thing. And um, the only thing about Texas for me is that electrical grid situation is no bueno. So when Ted Cruz wants to take his hip hypocritical self talking smack about Mexico, and then when all electric grid goes to kaputs, and he takes his family and, hi and, and jumps on the first plane to Mexico and leaves everybody else in a cold-ass winter with $10,000 electrical bills, yeah, no, no, thank you, okay? No. <laughs> I don't know. That's the only thing that frightens me. And plus, I don't ever want to live anywhere where they call it Tornado Alley. Okay, because this this season, it's kill it's it's wiping people's places out. You know, California, we shake in some wildfires. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It just doesn't seem as frightening as all those tornadoes. I, I don't know. Again, it's not California. I hate to say it. It's how it's being ran. It's it's what's happening. You know what I mean? So I don't know to tell you. Uh, we need RoboCop back. Absolutely. We need the 1989 RoboCop back. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. And RoboCop 2, the second one, the two things, we need that. We need that RoboCop up in here. Uh, I use a jean bag with a shoulder strap. Otherwise, my bulk bag is a Buffalo Hide large bag, 28, uh, 28 inches. See, these are, you guys are giving some great, great suggestions, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to be, myself, I'm going to be a lot more wise about, again, the size of the bag. I'm bringing very, the, the bare minimum. If I can't carry it on my back, it's not coming. Forget a tripod, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I'm really sad that I that we have gotten to this point. I'm in the D, man. Oh, you are. Oh, man. I already know. Detroit's in the house. Okay. Dang. Yeah, you are. I already know. I already know. Um, but here in California, you can't pack nothing. You can't pack nothing but the number to 91. Here's the thing. Like, I'm all for good policing. We need order. We need law. Because there's a lot of crazy people out here. I'm all for it. But police, unfortunately, are reactionary. They come after you get robbed, after you get shot, after, you know, they come after. Hey, what, what, what happened? Hey, hey, what, what just went on? You know, and then you like this. Please catch them, please catch them, please catch them. It's statistically, they don't always catch them. So that's my only gripe. So for me, it's what? Don't be a photographer? So me being a photographer puts me at default um, in a vulnerable position. So either I don't be a photographer and let these criminals win, right? Change my shit up, change my lifestyle up, or I be a photographer, and then I'm a I'm a walking bill a, a victim, uh, want to be a soon to be victim. I can't do anything to protect myself to stop them. If I do anything here in California, they have all sorts of laws where, you know, physical assault. They can sue me for physical assault if I fight at them. Which I'm more like not having because they're gonna have a gun, and if I shoot at them, I'm sure gonna get arrested 
for uh um uh, what do you call it manslaughter right and for publicly brandishing the weapon and for all sorts of all sorts of shit while there were the thieves the thieves have more rights that is clear that is so apparently clear and there's a light like a high likelihood they won't get caught They rob you, you run away, you take your little notes, you're out of your gear, and then all of a sudden, we see what we can do. And it's such a rare likelihood that they're going to get caught, and you're, you're shit out of luck. So, I don't blame you. Bring that peace, man. Fuck me. You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. Nick, I, I wised I had gotten the smaller buffalo bag, buffalo bag too. Yeah, that's like I said. I use a I use like a a sling bag, which looks like a normal sling bag or crossover bag that people wear, and I put two ca I put a camera and two lenses. That's it. That's it. That's all. You know, uh, traveling with firearms doesn't go well with airlines. Oh, you're right about that. No, you're right. If it's something like that, it's different. But I'm just saying, just leaving your house you, in California, you don't have that, all this firearms. It's not even part of a conversation you can't do it can it? you get it you can barely if someone breaks into my house right now okay takes it, it threatens me they'd have to have the gun point the dead in my face for me to shoot at them if they don't have the gun out or if it's let's say no they don't have holsters but let's just say they just want to take my tv they'll say why didn't you just let them take your tv don't let him say, why didn't you just let him take your TV? That's all he wanted. He wasn't threatening your life. All right? But he's in my house. He's got more rights than me. Look at this shit. I'm telling you, that's the way it is here. That's the way it is here, believe it or not. Okay? I don't know how we got to that, but either way, we did. Uh, uh, Nikon's NB, N11, NB, N12 brick can fit an air tag where the battery door is stored. I'm 95% sure of this. If that is a fantastic suggestion. I'm going to check that out. Matter of fact, small rig, matter, let me see if I can look this up for you guys. Oh, yeah, we're going overtime today, folks. I'm going to look it up on Amazon. I saw this. Small rig makes a, um, an attachment for your air tags. Small I saw it. Oh, look at this. Oh, that goes on that. That goes for your bike. Where is it? Damn. Um, ah, that's cool. A waterproof air tag that looks like Captain America. Um, where did it go? Pelican protector for your air tag. Oh hell no. A Pelican design protector for your air tag. I know they did, man. Where I saw it on on the internet. Um Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this to Google. That's what I'm gonna do. Small rig air tag. All right, there we go. Only, wow, it's only 16, 15. Okay. Check this out. All right. Let me pull this up for you guys. Okay. Boom. Check this out, guys. Everyone. Guys and cats. Boom. Check this out. Um, small rig cage for air tag. So this will mount on your um on your camera rig remember the camera rig i showed you guys that i built with the nikon z8 so you can attach this to your camera rig or to your ronin um gimbal it attaches like so you see that and you put your air tag in there screwed on tight and look at these screws too they ain't getting that out they ain't get they don't have that allen key <laughs> Those the, the thieves ain't got that allen key. Come on now, look at that. They don't have a 
a torque screw. <laughs> they don't have that. And you just put it on the top somewhere. Okay, put it on the top. The side. I probably put it on the side like this. Okay, and this what. And it's only sixteen dollars, seventeen dollars. Nine. It's nineteen dollars on B and H. All right. So there you go. Put an air tag in that. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. I saw that on Instagram, by the way. That's that's the thing. Um, Hold on, you guys are killing me here. Uh, <laughs> I hope Steven Seagal is cheap. I hope so too, brother. <laughs> uh, J-Rod comes in. I left my Sony camera on the passenger seat. Someone broke the window and threw in two more Sony. Ah, there you go. All right, we got jokers in here today, I tell you. I'm going to change my name to AI so that I get more work. hey I would. Who knows, right? Just like when uh, companies do like triple A piping, you know, some, uh, construction, right? Triple A construction, let's say that you get on the top of the searches. Um, or at least in newspapers, back, uh, not newspapers, uh, yellow pages back in the day. Shots fired. Hey, -oh. uh, no mugger is stealing my coffee. Well, you you know what? I, I, I will, That's where I go a lot. Draw the line. Fell says, these days, I feel like those final fight video games. Absolutely. Yes. It, it, uh, yeah, I'm trying to make sure we win out here. Okay, Fell, I'm trying to make sure we win, just like that Final Fantasy drop I just did. Uh, yeah. Florida has stand your ground. Here's the thing. I get stand your ground, but how it's been implemented is the only thing that's a little shaky to me. That's the only thing. I get it. I kind of get it. And it does, there is an equalizer in a sense of like, in the theory of it, right? But how it's implemented is not that righteous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Just look at the court cases. Certain people can't use that law as freely as some others. That's all I got to say. But I understand what you're saying, Nick. But the theory of it, I get it. It's like, hey, brother, if you know I'm back in, you, you're less likely to come up on me like you know, like 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 you're gonna get over on me, and I'm all for that. Nowadays, I am. I'm a believe it or not. I know this has nothing to do with photography, but uh, I'm a I'm a proud. Uh, hold on, let me put this up here. Here we go. Right, look, look. I'm part of the. Um, it's called NAGA, National African American Gun Association. Like I, I'm a proud member. I've been paying for them off. You know. Off Four years now or something and um trust me i'm all for it but it, i also have to worry about how it, how it's implemented and, and so far staying your ground has, has been a bit rocky okay um rbj mofos in your house eating up your food robbing you on the way out hey i'm telling you right now in california they would say why did you why did you try to stop them why, why did you try to fix them and stop them? You assaulted them. Did they have their back turned? Did they have their back turned when they were eating, their, eating your cereal? So they weren't a threat. Therefore, you assaulted them. You're in jail. Uh-oh. That's what's going to happen, RBJ. I'm telling you, man. In the house, shoot him. Then shoot a warning shot at the floor. I fired a warning shot. A cop told me that. Uh, here's the thing. It might work over there, Malcolm, in uh, Texas, right, where snakes have guns. You know what I'm saying? In California, brother, I'm telling you right now, that does not fly. It doesn't fly. The only reason why you can even have one in California is because in their constitution, you have the Second Amendment. Otherwise, they would have banned guns like said, man, I'm telling you, they would have banned guns uh, before the Civil Rights Movement bill was passed. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it would have been a rat <laughs> uh, oh man Craig is going down uh, Seagal Seagal memory lane over here <laughs> uh, hey you know what I'm not going to lie quite honestly 
Steven Seagal. I used to love his movies. I liked a lot of them. Dude, I was all up in it, right? But man, he's not looking. Time did not help him out. I'll tell you that right now. He's he's a bit out of his. He needs to just chill. You know, if he's got a couple mil in the bank, just you know, just chill, man. Uh, Malcolm comes back. You need a link for those. You just sold a ton of those small air tag cases, dude. I try. Thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate that. But you know what? Um, I couldn't even find it on um on Amazon where I do have my affiliate link. This is that was straight to Small Rig's um, website. But, hey, man, it's a good piece of gear I want to share with you guys. And it costs nothing. $16. Jeff comes in from uh, Selective Imagery. Got to take off. Need to get my gear ready for the AM. God, I hope I, I hope we didn't uh, impress some paranoia. But, you know, it is what it is. As long as I don't get struck by lightning. Had some bad storms tonight. Hopefully not in the AM. Well, let me give you a good round of applause and good luck, man. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out with us. Um, oh, okay, J Rod says he has to get off. You know what, at, at guys? Believe it or not, I went 15 minutes over because we were rocking and rolling. So I guess I'm gonna head out too. Uh, <laughs> Roy says we don't have enough guns here for it to be a problem. Um, well, shout out to you, brother, because I'd rather not have to have any. But here in Oakland, all the wrong people have them. That's the problem. All the wrong people seem to have them. All the wrong people seem to have them. And when it's at a point where we're even having this discussion as photographers on a live stream about photography, you know, that's a problem. Uh, right? Uh, Fell says, guys, we should have a stream talk about how we stay healthy. This whole that's a that's a damn good idea, Phil. That is a fantastic idea. Hold on, I think a few people want to give their thanks for that great suggestion. It's a little crowd just want to give their thanks. Uh, that's a great idea. Gave me an idea for a future topic. I'll tell you that. Um, Craig says there have been armed home invasions where the family dog has. Torn out of the intruder, families lose civil from intruder. Insane, exactly. That's what I'm saying. They have more rights. I just don't, dude. I'm Musa, Musa, Musa. Okay, I need to calm down. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just thought. You know what? You're right. There's still a lot of desert left. So, uh. <laughs> uh Fell says mainly because if you are a little heavy, it's hard to move down. Yourself. Yeah, you're right. You actually, that's a great point, man. Um, I'm going to think about that later. All right. So, with all that said, we already know what happens when this song comes on, brother. It is in, in, in gals, sisters, and brothers out there. I wish I'd see more female photographers join the combo. Come on now. Where the ladies at? You're welcome to my uh, live stream space any time of the day, right? Uh, of course, even beware of the wild side will turn away computers. Yeah, you're right. The simple stuff. All right. Uh, Malcolm, thanks for a great show. No, thank you, Malcolm, for coming in, hanging out, and listening to my rants. That's what's up. Thank you, sir. All right. So, uh, folks, come on now. If you haven't already, go ahead and follow me on all the socials on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on threads because I'm so cool. I'm on TikTok dancing with the with the Gen Zs. And I'm on uh, the Twitter with Elon Musk and Kanye. Whoa. All right. And on your way out, please go ahead. Smash that like, that share, subscribe to the channel. And as I said, as I said, everybody, next week, we will be talking about all about video. That's right. Derek and I, Derek will be back. Shout out to Derek. And we will be discussing all about video. Lenses, cameras, settings, etc. So get your video questions ready. I can't wait to share with all of you. What little I know. All right. We got some last minute uh, stuff. Uh, oh, okay. You know what? Yes, Mozman, I have to get out of here. Believe it or not. I have to eat. Peace out, brother. All right. 
We got Fel. Fel, thanks, thanks for a great chat. You are welcome. Hi says thanks for the content as usual. No, thank you. I appreciate you for tuning in. And uh, Manila from Martin. Thank you, everyone. This is a great live and chat. Thank you, my man. Thank you so much for the Philippines. I love the Philippines. All right. So with all that said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, make sure you post them down below, folks. Post it down below, please. Until next time, keep shooting, stay creative. Thank you for watching. Join me every Thursday on YouTube for another live show of Let's Talk Photography. We cover the latest news, interviews with today's industry leaders, tips, tricks, lighting, cameras, and the business of photography. My weekly live stream is all about crowd participation. You're encouraged to ask questions, talk about the cool camera gear you've got or the camera gear you want to get. Hell, you can just join our open panel discussion during our Q&A portion of the show. The cost of access to Let's Talk Photography is very, very low. For today only, I'm hosting a very low price of free 99 to subscribe and press that bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming live.